I have reviewed audiophile switches in the 800 to 1000 euro price range and found them improving the sound quality clearly. Not so long ago Thunder Data introduced the Silent Angel Bon N8 audiophile switch, just under 400 euros. Silent Angel is a brand of Thunder Data from Xiamen China. They also produce a music server costing around 1500 euros. The Bon N8 switch on review here has 8 ports and comes with a medical grade switch mode power supply. The idea of an audio grade switch is to place it in between your router and your audio related network equipment. This way the audio equipment is offered a cleaner and better timed network signal leading to better sound quality. Earlier reviews of the AccuVox AQ Switch Special Edition and the SOTM SNH10G Switch showed clearly sound improvements when using the SOTM SMS200 Ultra Neo Network Bridge. So let's have a look at the Silent Angel. To understand how an audiophile switch could be used, let's put down a normal stereo setup. A stereo amplifier with speakers. To that connected a network player or bridge of any kind that is connected over a network cable to your router. Depending on your network player there might also be a computer or NAS connected to the router. When you want to add an audiophile network switch it is connected in between the network player and your router. Depending on the physical separation between the audiophile router and the computer or NAS the last can also be connected to the audiophile switch. Perhaps you use an amplifier with built in streamer like a modern AV receiver. In that case the audio file switch is connected directly to the network socket on the AV receiver. The full metal housing of the Bon N8 looks like a simple domestic switch. It measures 155 by 85 by 26 mm and weighs 330 grams excluding power supply. On the front we find 10 small LEDs. The left one for power with next to it an error indicator followed by 8 LEDs that indicate connections and activities on the 8 ports. On the rear the DC power in to connect the medical grade power supply to and 8 network ports. When we look inside we see that directly behind the power socket there is some power regulation. Here we see the network sockets from the top with directly behind it 4 inductors per socket. A network cable has 8 strands that per pair carries a signal. The inductors are to filter out nasties from these signals. Behind these filters 32 small transformers that provide galvanic separation on the 8 network ports. Under this metal plate the microprocessor is hidden. I presume the metal is for heat dissipation. Not visible, stuck on the bottom of the housing just below the microprocessor, special high permeability EMA absorbent tape reduces electromagnetic interference. The small board unscrewed holds the high spec temperature compensated clock crystal, branded Silent Angel and specified at 0.1 parts per million something you won't find in normal domestic switches. The board is connected to the main board using a 4 pin socket that runs the power. The clock signal is connected over an HF cable to the microprocessor. It is rather opportunistic to review a 1000 euro switch on a network plane costing almost half the price. But perhaps a switch costing 395 euros might be more realistic. And there was something else I picked my brain for. If the network signal would have to be cleaned up, why is that not an integral part of the net network player? I expect that repairing a network signal to this degree is too costly for affordable equipment. Experimenting with several switches and network players I came to a predictable conclusion. It all de depends on the combination of equipment. So I set up a test involving three network players and three switches. The network players were the Bluesound Note 2i at about 550 euros, 
The SOTM SMS200 also Neo with S Booster BOTW PMP MK2 power supply at about 1700 euros. And the Aurelic Aries G2 at 4200 euros. The switches were the TP Link TLSG108 with the standard power supply costing 32 euros. The Silent Angel costing 395 euros. And the SOTM SNH10G costing 999 euros. Since the AccuFox AccuSwitch performed about the same as the SOTM switch, I left it out to keep the test doable. I also did all my testing using my setup one for the same reason. The Blue Sound Note 2i was directly connected over analog interlinks to the amp in my setup one. I started with the cheap TP-Link switch. It was quite some time ago I had the Note 2i connected to setup 1 and again I was impressed by how clean this Note sounds. To avoid misunderstandings it doesn't belong in setup 1 since it doesn't deliver on resolution, stereo image and so on. But there are no digital nasties and it does make music. Plugging it into the Silent Angel switch gave some more depth and resolution and it sounded more relaxed. Not spectacular, but in a way you go to appreciate over time. And then going back to the cheap switch again hurts. Changing to the SOTM switch even improved the same parameters a notch more. I wouldn't buy the SOTM if my player was the Note 2 i There probably is more to gain from investing mo that money in other equipment. The Silent Angel I might consider. Certainly when I already have the Note 2 i it does improve the sound quality enough to invest the money. Switching to a higher quality streamer for that money will be difficult. This network bridge, network player if you like, was used to review both the SOTM and AccuFox switches. I've put links to the reviews in the top corner and in the notes below this video on YouTube. There you can see that these switches do wonders to the sound quality. With the SOTM switch using fiber optics instead of CAT 6A between the switch on the third floor and the SOTM switch on the first floor, it further improved the sound quality. This might be due to the fact that my house is only 10 kilometers from the largest digital radio and TV antenna tower in my country. HF radiation does get into network cables to some degree while it can't get into fiber optics. The Bond B8 doesn't get to the level of the SOTM switch, but it is considerable better than the cheap TP-Link. Especially sibilance control of the Bond N8 is clearly better while the stereo image gets more royal, wider, deeper and better defined. If you have a decent stereo and play with the cheap switch, I would certainly consider the Bond N8. In this setup it delivers 70% of the SOTM at 40% of the price. If you want to go for the best, the SOTM should be your choice. Remarkably, the difference between the cheap switch and the Bond B8 is not as big as with the SMS200 Ultra Neo. There still is clear improvement. It sounds more relaxed and cleaner. The Aries G2 Bond B8 combo sounds superior to the SMS200 Ultra Neo Bond N8 combo. That might be clear. Going to the SOTM switch again is not as big a step as with the SMS200 Ultra Neo. I presume the network signal is indeed cleaned up in the Aries G2. Still, both audiophile switches did improve the sound. I already own the SOTM switch and you might wonder if, after spending this amount of money for a digital transport, you want to save on the switch. But the Bon B2 does improve the sound for far less money. Let me mention that again with this switch you should use the supplied medical grade switch mode power supply. It is the third time I noticed that linear power supplies are not a good match for switches. Furthermore, it's clear that the audiophile switches do improve the sound quality. To what degree depends on the switch and the network player you choose. 
for many the silent angel will fit the budget a lot easier than the SOTM switch. And it does bring clear improvement provided your equipment is refined enough to make it audible. I expect results to vary depending on the equipment used, but there will always be a positive result. There are not many certainties in audio, but this one I can give you. And on that bombshell I will end this video. See you next week in another video, as always at Fridays at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on thehbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music and the sirens.